All right, guys, I want to talk to you today about degeneration. That's my question for you. What does it mean to be a degenerate? And speaking of degenerates, an Instagram model claims she had an affair with married Maroon 5 frontman, Adam Levine. And in classic victim mentality, she now says that she feels exploited. She's the victim, guys. All that and more coming up today on Candace Owens. All right, guys, so I guess that is the vocabulary of the day. Degenerate, what does it actually mean? Well, as defined by Merriam-Webster, it means either one, having declined or become less specialized, as in nature, character, structure, or function, from an ancestral or former state. Second definition is having sunk to a condition below that which is normal to a type, especially having sunk to a lower and usually corrupt and vicious state. So you're sinking to a lower state. I wanted to ask you that question because it's always on my mind. I actually, in my head, I use that word probably more than I should, but I think it's good for us to recognize degeneration when we see it. So I'll sometimes just be looking at a piece of news and think, wow, what a total degenerate. I mean, that what this person is just a degenerate, right? We have sort of lowered the bar here in terms of our society. And I do think that American culture um, at its core has become degenerative thanks to the culture of Hollywood and thanks to the institution of education, which sort of celebrates all things corrupt and all things vicious. And I was especially thinking about this because I had a chuckle. I was tagged in something on Instagram. It was the video of me talking about Kim Kardashian, um, where I called her a prostitute. And the comments were shockingly very positive. Everyone agreed with that statement. But there was one woman who, although she agreed with me saying that Kim Kardashian and her mother colluding to sell her sex tape was a form of prostitution, she was upset that in that video, I used the phrase out of wedlock sex. I said her mother watched a video, referring to Kris Jenner, her mother watched a video of Kim Kardashian having out of wedlock sex with her boyfriend. And the woman was upset by that. She, she wrote, oh, Candace, don't try to push your Christian views on people. <laughs> I just thought to myself, what an absolute degenerate comment. Like, wh- why would you be upset? Maybe you don't believe that people need to wait until they are married to have sex. But why would you be so upset to hear someone say out of wedlock sex that you you found it within you to comment on it and to say, don't push your Christian views as if I'm the weirdo for saying out of wedlock sex, as if that even belongs, by the way, just to Christianity, as if morality now, when we speak of things that are moral and at least things that are good to aspire to, right? We, it's good to aspire to wanting to have sexual relations with somebody who actually cares about you and wants to be with you for the rest of your life. But now we're in this condition where it's like even mentioning that, it, they think that's dirty. Like, oh my gosh, like why would she, I want my daughter to have sex with a ton of people before she gets married. That, that was what I was getting from this woman, right? Like how could you even mention out of wedlock sex, Candace? Like it's better people to have tons of sex and then get married. I mean, what a, what a degenerate. But this, as I said, seems to be the state of things today in America and all around the world. But of course, you see it creeping up all throughout our culture. And it's not just sexual relations. And by the way, don't forget, I have told you guys a million times, I'm not trying to be the person that, oh, I'm talking down to you and I'm of high caliber morality. I am a way better person today than I was when I was growing up. Actually, I look back on the the choices that I made when I was younger and I think, wow, I really gave in to a degenerate culture, right? I always say to people, especially when I'm giving speeches, I took the most liberal route to conservatism that there ever was because I was a product of my environment. And my environment was liberalism. My environment was growing up in a school system that celebrated promiscuity, right? Like that woman in the comments, don't even say out of wedlock sex. It's not natural is kind of the idea, right? I learned that in in health class that it was okay to have multiple partners as long as you were having safe sex. It's totally fine to have multiple partners and it's old fashioned. It's old fashioned to to think about out of wedlock sex, right? And it's not just sexual relationships that we've perverted to the point where people have this visceral response when you say something moral, but it's even the institution of marriage, right? 
I was thinking about that because I saw a headline uh, about Emily Rata Joukowsky. I think I'm saying her last name right. She is, you can describe her, I guess, as a partial actress. Her big break was in uh, Robin Thicke's music video, Blurred Lines. She was completely naked, and she sort of just danced naked and topless in this video. And she kind of has been na- dancing naked and topless through life. You can go to her Instagram page. I'm not painting her in any way that would upset her. She's proud of the fact that she is always naked. She views this as a form of power for women to be naked all the time. So you can see, like I said, look, you can look onto her Instagram page, and for whatever reason, her breasts are always out uh, she she often has her butt in the air, and she just takes these pictures. I think the the slang that people are using today is it's a thirst trap, right? People it's to make people desire you on the internet. And I saw a headline uh, that she is married, was married, is getting divorced. That her and her husband were divorcing, and the headline was commenting on the fact. It sounded like something that maybe came directly from her. Um, that sources say sources might have been her that he's an absolute dog. And he cheated on her, right? She, she's leaving him because there's been infidelity in their marriage. And I chuckled because I just, I laughed in my head because I went, oh, yeah, obviously. She's always naked on the internet. I mean, what is it but an act of infidelity in your relationship if you are a married woman and you're constantly naked? You're just forever naked on the internet. People have this idea that they are, I guess, not responsible for their virtual behavior. Like they do things online that they would never do in person. It would be very bizarre, right, if you're a married woman and you're around a bunch of young guys, not your husband, and you strip down half naked and you put your butt in the air. And you're just like, hey guys, what's up? Hey, I'm Emma. Or you just took your top off and did this and just like covered basically your nipples. And you were just like, hey guys, thirst trap. But for whatever reason, people have separated themselves. They're like, oh, on Instagram, it's totally fine for me to do this. It's totally fine for men to lust about me all the time on the internet. This is fine because it's just a picture and it's powerful somehow. I like to say that you should perform on the internet. It's not a video game, okay? It's not a video game. You don't get to create an avatar of yourself on Instagram and then say, oh, that's different. No, no, no. You should, as I like to say, behave on Instagram, behave on Facebook, behave on Twitter, behave on the internet as you would in real life, right? So yeah, I, I could entirely believe that he was cheating on her because she has been cheating on him in my mind, right? I feel like I've had sex with Emily Rodzikowski. Every time I'm on the internet and I see her, her boobs are out. We've all been, we've all slept in some capacity with Emily Rodzikowski. I believe she has absolutely no respect for her relationship and how she acts, but I guess it was his act of infidelity in what she perceives to be the real world. The virtual world is fine. Her video game character, it's fine. But in the real world, you know, that's where it actually caused harm to her relationship. And now she's bravely leaving him. What a degenerate. What an absolute degenerate in my mind. This is a degenerated, this marriage has degenerated and you guys have both accepted these terms. But this is kind of, I'm commenting on that because this is where our society is for whatever reason. We we glorify behavior that is obviously degenerate. Um, as just one example, there was an actress named Chloe Moretz. She was young at the time. She was 19 years old. And she somehow got into a Twitter spat with the Kardashian family. And she was commenting on this sort of pornographic online world. And she said, she responded to Kim Kardashian, who had put a picture of herself naked, kind of, you know, thirst trap, hashtag thirst trap, here I am naked. Uh, this time Kim was married, um, and but fully frontal naked with two black stripes to cover the parts that were too rude for Instagram or that Twitter would have pulled down. Um, and Chloe Grace responded to this completely fully frontal naked picture, and she said, Kim, I truly hope you realize, this is a tweet, I truly hope you realize how important setting goals are for young women, teaching them that we have so much more to offer than our bodies. Wow, what a beautiful tweet from a teenager that is just saying, hey, you know, you have a huge following and you you can offer more, you can offer your intellect, you are a beautiful woman, like, but also you could you could give more of you, offer your marketing skills, offer something else. This is to me a kind tweet saying 
we can all aspire to do better. This is regenerative, right? She's basically saying this is kind of degenerate, but you're capable of more. But in response, uh, Kim wrote back, let's all welcome Chloe Moretz to Twitter since no one knows who she is. Your nylon cover is cute, boo. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, okay, so let's just attack this teenager at the time. She might have been 20. I think she, I believe she was 19. It was in 2016, and she's 25 today. Um, let's attack her because she asked you to stop being a degenerate in the kindest possible terms ever, right? And then that wasn't enough to just say, oh, nobody knows who you are, so I'm going to be fully frontal naked. It wasn't enough for her to do that. She then teamed up with Emily Rochajkowski, who I told you was always naked, and they were like, yeah, more power to us girls that are naked on the internet. They teamed up, and they both then posted this photo of them topless <laughs> on the internet, and they are giving the middle finger. So it's an F you to Chloe because, like, I don't know, she asked you guys to stop being degenerate. And this is uh, so emblematic of the world that we live in today. And by the way, the newspapers, the magazines, they applauded Kim. They applauded Kim and Emily for this action of like, whoop, slapped her down. Whoop, slapped down that morality. Whoop, this girl tried to comment on degenerates. And nope, nope, nope. We are being degenerate out in the open. We do not care. Like, yes, go us grown adult women who are both married and like, who cares? Who is this? Who knows you, boo? Who even knows who you are, boo? Yeah, that's where we are at. I say we talk about Generation Y. We talk about, talk about Generation X, but we now live in Generation D. Degenerates. Those are my thoughts on that. Okay, so before we get into the headlines of the day, I want to talk to you about Bond Charge. Formerly called Blue Blocks, they have rebranded and are now called Bond Charge, and they're a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of products aimed at helping you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, reduce inflammation. My favorite product from Bond Charge is their computer glasses. I am on my phone and computer a lot during the day, reading emails and doing research, and I used to get really bad headaches from staring at screens all day. Then I tried their computer glasses and they totally solved my problem of digital eye strain. They are pricier than other brands, but I think the investment is 100% worth it, and here's why. They're made in optics laboratories, not mass produced in factories. They use science-backed technology that is tested to ensure that they actually work. Their frames are really beautiful and they have even been featured in GQ and Vogue. Their glasses come in non-prescription, prescription, and reading options, and they have a wide variety of glasses for every need. So go to bondcharge.com slash Candice and use coupon code Candice to save 20% off your purchase. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com and use coupon code Candice to save 20%. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. First up today, we have a Canadian high school which is defending a transgender teacher who wore enormous prosthetic breasts underneath a tight T-shirt to class. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, I should just tell you this teacher is wearing a very bad wig, um, pink lipstick, and the prosthetic breasts, we're not talking about a size A or a size B. I don't, this size, if I had to guess, this is like a size Z in breasts. It's uh, basically... If your breasts were hitting your kneecaps, you know that song, do your ears hang low? Do they wobble too? This could be, the, this is the size of the prosthetic breasts that I am looking at. And yeah, that is Kayla Lemieux, a manufacturing technology teacher at Oakville Trafalgar High School in Ontario. And obviously this went viral because students took photos and videos of the teacher uh, without his knowledge, wearing these prosthetics, which is exactly what I would do. Uh, actually, if I was not with a child, if I was with my child, I would cross the street because clearly uh, this person is mentally disturbed, right? People, uh, you're act, you're asking for a reaction. Ben Shapiro talks about this all the time. You're doing something that is so outrageous only because you want people to react, right? It would be outrageous for any individual to have size Z boobs and put on a tight-fitting shirt and also, I should say, was wearing what looked like a small skirt. And this teacher in the video uh, that is shown that they took, that they captured, is sawing wood, right? Bending over to saw some wood. Obviously, this is completely inappropriate and crazy. So you either take a video of it because it's so odd and you want to send it to your friend and say, look at this complete and utter whack job that I just captured. Or you cross the street and make sure that it doesn't get anywhere near your children. But nope. 
this teacher is now in a high school. So you would think that this high school had some standards and would tell this mentally disturbed individual that despite your mental disturbance, we are going to need you to dress professionally. But note, not only have they hired this individual uh, uh, much to the horror or fascination of their students, they also, in response to this video going viral of this crazy person, only went viral because this is crazy, right? Um, the high school defended their employee. Yep, the high school wrote to the parents and explained why they support Ms. That's a lie. Pull your kids out. They're telling you they can pick your gender. Why they support Ms. Lemieux's gender expression. Ah, gender expression. That's a feel-good word. It's compassionate. I'm not going to call you crazy and out of your mind. I'm going to call you gender expressive. In a statement to parents, the school said, quote, as a school within the Houghton District School Board, Oakville High School recognizes the rights of students, staff, parents, and guardians, and community members to equitable treatment without discrimination based upon gender identity and gender expression. We thrive to promote a positive learning environment in schools consistent with the values of the HDSB and to ensure a safe and inclusive environment for all students, staff, and the community, regardless of race, age, ability, sex, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, ethnicity, religion, cultural observance, socioeconomic circumstances, or body type and or size. Uh, this is a lot of words to say that they do not care if you are clearly demonstrating that you are out of your mind because they will hire you. In fact, this person was likely hired to show how open they are to crazy. This is what it means to be a degenerate culture. You have absolutely no standards, and then you try to pretend that your standards are that there are acceptance. You know what? I like discrimination when you're discriminating against crazy, when you're discriminating against bad, when you're discriminating against people that have absolutely no moral compass, right? You do not, you do not have a moral compass if you are choosing every single day to put on size Z prosthetics and to go to wood shop and saw in front of children, something's wrong with you, okay? There is something wrong with Kayla Lemieux. But of course, in a true act of cowardice, which is what we keep seeing across all school boards, really, they essentially say, oh, it's, it's totally fine because all we want is for people to think that we're open and we're accepting and parents should not accept this. It is so abhorrent that these students have to walk into a classroom and to observe that every, every day and are told that they're the problem if they think it's weird. You're the problem if you're normal. Abnormal is now cool and abnormal. We're, so we're on board with this. I would pull my child out of that classroom quickly. Actually, I'd probably sue them. I, I would sue the school board. I would just say, this is ridiculous. This is abusive to my child. It's abusive to the environment that my child is attempting to learn in. And it is. So maybe somebody in Canada get an idea. Next headline we had today is that there was a Wisconsin school district. And this Wisconsin school district says that parents are ready not entitled to know their children's sexuality. They are pushing also a heterosexual privilege list. So there was a presentation at a teacher training for Eau Claire School District, which told the school staff, quote, some transgender, non-binary, and or gender non-conforming students are not open at home for reasons that may include safety concerns or a lack of acceptance. School personnel should speak with the student first, before discussing a student's gender nonconformity or transgender status with the student's parent or guardian. Remember, parents are not entitled to know their kids' identities. That knowledge must be earned, end quote. Ladies and gentlemen, I am certain that I am going to go to prison when my child goes. I'm certain I am going to be arrested when my child goes to school because let me find out that teachers were distributed a list that says that I am not entitled to my child's identity. I, I am not entitled. I don't know. I just I held this child for 10 months. I have fed this child. I have clothed this child. I have taken care of this child. I have created this child, my husband and I. And you are now telling me I am not entitled to know my child's identity. Yes, these absolute freaks and pedophiles are coming after your children. That's what they are, right? We are now priming the environment, just so we're clear, for pedophilia. I've been saying this for years. It starts with gender, right? Oh, it's a safe space. 
right? Uh, this is, it's between you and I, what happens. This is stuff that you hear, right? This haunting sort of language when you talk about relationships between pedophiles and children. Don't tell your mom and dad, right? They're not entitled to know what takes place between you and I, right? I am someone outside of the safety of the home that is now telling you that actually you're more safe with me. This is sick, and every single person that is hearing this should be alarmed. This is, it's no longer acceptable for us not to be involved in every single thing that our child is learning at school because this is what's happening, right? They're now training teachers to think that this is normal behavior. Fortunately, we have a lot of teachers that know how wrong this is. It's why these stories often break out. It's because there's a teacher that leaks it and says, I don't even feel comfortable. You're telling me that, that these students are proprietary to me? This is the language they use. These are, these are our kids, right? School districts believe that. They believe that the children are theirs and that the parents at home are just inconvenient, right? Establish that relationship outside of the home. This is just the Department of Education fulfilling its long-term dream to remove parents, right? We're going to raise up your children in a way that we believe to be correct. And right now, that big government believes that children being confused about their gender helps them. It supports their initiatives, right? It's this constant breakdown of family I'm talking about because that's what happens. These kids get on puberty blockers. Now they're actually pushing for nurses to be able to diagnose your children and to potentially be able to start them on puberty blockers, something that we know that wrecks their sexual functions, something that we know that can lead to depression. This is all beginning because of a school system. A, a, a system that is put in place to take power away from the parents. It's the scary stuff, you guys. And if that wasn't bad enough, this same school also provided a white privilege test. A white privilege test. This is a, amazing. This is a test that went out. Um, I, I think it goes out to students. Might be to the teachers as well. But here it is. And this is amazing because I think, according to this test, that I, I have white privilege. <laughs> Ready? This is number one. If I wish to, I can arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. Yeah, of course. You just called your friends. You can have friends of whatever race you want. You should just make friends. Number two, I can be sure that no matter where I move to, my neighbors in that location will be pleasant or neutral to me. Yeah. No, that's, I definitely feel that way. I can go shopping alone and be sure that I won't be followed or harassed. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I can do that. I do that. Yeah, I go to the store. I can turn on the television, open a newspaper, and see people of my race widely represented. Yeah, no, it definitely feels like today you almost have to be a minority <laughs> to make it onto the screens. All the talk show hosts, all of the awards, now they're like, it's got to be a black person. So I feel good about that. I can speak in public to a powerful male group without putting my race on trial. I literally have no idea what that even means, but I'm going to go ahead and check yes to that. I don't, I, why would my race be on trial if I spoke to a powerful male group? Also, what is a powerful male group? I have questions that I, before I can even answer that accurately. I am never asked to speak for my entire racial group. Now, that's a definite check for me. Often I'm told, you're not allowed to speak for black people, Candace. Okay, so a check. I, I have taken this test. It appears that I have white privilege <laughs> to you. I mean, this is just the most ridiculous thing. It's just, again, trying to brainwash people into believing that they're victims, that every single thing that, you, that happens to you is some act of aggression. You can't even go to the grocery store. That's what this test is telling you. If you're black, you can't even go to the grocery store. You can't even move into a neighborhood without being judged. That's what this test is telling you. The white privilege test, which I somehow have passed with flying colors. I don't know how I did that. I don't know, I'm really smart. I'm really, really smart. Next headline. I can hardly talk about degenerates without covering this story. I just am so amazed by this model. She's an Instagram model. That's my favorite euphemism for, uh, I don't know, a prostitute. An Instagram model who claims she had a year-long affair with married Maroon 5 frontman Adam Levine. He's 43. And he asked her if he could name his unborn third child with supermodel Bahati Prinsloo, that's his wife, after her. Okay, so let's just watch the video that she posted to TikTok um, to talk about the affair that she had. I'm just going to rip the bandaid off because I've retaken this like 10 times now. Essentially, I was having an affair with a man who's married to a Victoria's Secret model. At the time, you know, I was 
young. I was naive and I mean, quite frankly, I feel exploited. I wasn't in the scene like I am now. Um, so I was definitely very easily manipulated. We're in five is practically elevator music at this point. So I'm sure you know who Adam Levine is. Um, but Adam and I were seeing each other for about a year. After I stopped talking to him over, you know, a period of months, this is uh, how he came back into my life. He said, okay, serious question. I'm having another baby, and if it's a boy, I really uh, want to name it Sumner. You okay with that? Dead serious. Um, <laughs> I was like, I'm in hell. Like, I have to be in hell at this point. <laughs> I mean, my morals were unknowingly compromised. I was completely manipulated. I didn't handle this privately. I never wanted to come forward because obviously I know the implications that come with doing what I do, making money the way I do and being an Instagram model. Um, so being tied to a story like this, it's like, I know the stereotypes. I had sent, um, I had sent some screenshots recklessly to a few friends I thought I trusted and one of them had attempted to sell to a tabloid. Um, so here I am. She's an Instagram model, guys. Quite frankly, she feels exploited. Quite frankly, she feels like like manip manipulated. Like I, her morals were like unknowingly compromised. She was a victim. Sumner's a victim. Like she didn't know. Like she's just like a girl. Like how was she supposed to know? She's on the internet, and she like I mean, it's like elevator music, Maroon Five music, and everybody clearly knows who Adam Levine is. But she is the victim of the story. Don't you feel sad for her? She had to go on TikTok and talk about how she wrecked a marriage. And by the way, I am not excusing Adam Levine from this. I am just so fascinated by how degenerate your mind has to be in order for you to realistically, obviously, respond to the fact that somebody is rich and famous. Go for it because you're an Instagram model, right? Hope that you're going to establish a relationship with him. Do this for an entire year and then publicly come out with this story. Not like you did the moral thing to do, which would be if you really thought in reflection that you were doing something that was wrong, you would reach out to his wife. You would reach out to Bahati Prinzalu, who doesn't deserve this. She's currently pregnant. She has no idea, clearly, about this affair. And she finds out on TikTok, right? If you are a moral individual, you would have reached out to her and you said, hey, you know, I am sorry for what I did. I am sorry how what I have done and what I have contributed to hurt you. Yes, I knew what I was doing. Clearly, everybody knows who Adam Levine is. Everybody knows who Maroon 5 is. If she was a moral person, that's what she would have done. But nope, she went on like TikTok because like TikTok, I don't know. I feel moral. Ex I feel exploited. I'm the victim because I was young. Yeah, you were desperate to establish a relationship with a famous rich man, right? Prostitution is the oldest trade in the book. And you did all of this and yet you want us to feel bad for you, Amber Heard, because we're all so stupid that we're supposed to think, oh, Adam Levine just took advantage of you. You didn't know what was going on. Of course you knew exactly what was going on. This was supposed to be a trade, right? You were going to trade sex for a little bit of status. It happens over and over and over again. But I guess in the era of Me Too, we're not allowed to say that. Mm, too bad. I just said that. By the way, Adam Levine really sucks that you would do this to somebody. Really sucks that you would do this to somebody who was pregnant. And I can't even begin to unpack what kind of a psychosis you must be in to then say you want to name the child after someone that you are allegedly having an affair with. But he did release this statement, so I want to add it. He said, a lot is being said about me right now, and I want to clear the air. I used poor judgment in speaking with anyone other than my wife in any kind of flirtatious manner and did not have an affair. Nevertheless, I crossed the line during a regrettable period in my life. In certain instances, it became inappropriate. I have addressed that and taken proactive steps to remedy this with my family. My wife and my family is all I care about in this world. To be this naive and stupid enough to risk the only thing that truly matters to me was the greatest mistake I could ever make. I will never make it again. I take full responsibility. We will get through it, and we will get through it together. Okay, um, sure, I'm glad that you're offering a public apology, but it kind of feels a bit moot. You know, as I said, Bahati Prinsloo is pregnant. This is a terrible, terrible thing for any woman to have to suffer while she's pregnant. And yeah, you had terrible judgment. Whether you had an affair or not goes back to what we said earlier, right? If you are engaging in online behavior that you would not engage in in real life, you are guilty, 
right? It is not just an act of infidelity when it happens in the real world. You know, virtual, oh, online, I'm flirting with this Instagram model and she's obviously a disgusting human being, but it shouldn't matter. It does matter. Be better. Stop separating yourself from your behavior online. That's all I have to say about that. Another story, which I have very little to say about because it speaks for itself and it just, it breaks my heart in a way that black culture has come to this. In fact, one of my favorite things, and by favorite things, I mean least favorite things that people say to me is, you know, Candace, you don't represent black culture. This is what they say. You don't understand black culture. You don't know black culture when we see these images of girls twerking on the screen constantly, wearing thongs, when we see people like Cardi B performing and being, I mean, just completely debasing what it means to be a black woman, right? When we see this, they say, Candace, you don't know. You don't understand black culture. Nope. Um, I don't know why you think this is black culture. I don't. Um, I don't know who led you to believe that this is all black culture had to represent. I don't know why you don't understand how degenerative black culture has become. Because when I was growing up, I was growing up with the temptations. I was watching things like Family Matters. This is not what black culture from, was when I was growing up. This wasn't the age in the 90s. Our families were together. We had values. We had faith. We believed in God. We believed in our families. Today, none of those things, right? We're just celebrating promiscuity. We're celebrating nudity. And somebody along the lines convinced us that it's ours, that celebrating rap culture, which promotes gun violence and gangs and death and murder is ours. It's not ours. I refuse to accept it. So when you tell me I don't know it, good. I don't want to know it. I want nothing to do with that. I want to be a part of the regenerative culture. I want to be a part of the people that believe and know that black Americans have more to contribute. So I want to get to this story because I think it really underscores what I'm saying. We have a female rapper. I don't even care to say her name. Um, and she says in a video that she has murder on her mind as she twerks in front of Planned Parenthood. Take a listen. Like we, we, we have to stop. We have to stop. I, I can't. We just let's just stop it there. On the way to plan, on, on the way to the clinic, I got I got murder on my mind. Do I mean do you, I? Do you have words? I don't have them. I real I don't have them, and I am waiting for someone that feels that they are a better representation of Black culture to speak out against this, to recognize what it means when Planned Parenthood, right, is now getting exposure from black women that are half naked outside, the same Planned Parenthood, which as we have mentioned before on the show and as we will continue to mention ad nauseum because facts and history matter, that was created to stop black people from procreating. Now we have Lizzo promoting Planned Parenthood. Now we have this rapper promoting Planned Parenthood, making a mockery of the 18 million plus black American children that were killed inside of their mother's womb. You wanna know where the most unsafe place is for a black child? It's not on the streets, it's in their mother's wombs. And it's because our culture is rotten. Our culture is training us to believe that we should be celebrating this immorality. It is despicable. Maybe somebody should join me in having the courage to say it. And that's all I have to say about that. All right, guys, the next portion of the show is going to be available exclusively on Daily Wire Plus. I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on Biden's recent 60 Minutes interview and Meghan Markle's tears for the queen. So if you're not a member yet, go ahead and click the link in the description and subscribe right now.